welcome to Spectacle on Television Nigeria. I am your host, Daniel Atai. Welcome to another episode of Spectacle on Television Nigeria. I am Daniel Atai, and this morning we shall be looking at the presidential address on the lockdown extension of COVID-19 on the 13th uh, of March, 13th of April, 2020. And uh, in this view, we are going to be analyzing in the studio uh, some important, you know, uh, statements that the president has went down yesterday for the nation. And uh, I will be discussing with some analysts in the studio, uh, researcher and an economist in the studio, which will be introduced to you very shortly after this timeout. We'll go through the, uh, the whole uh, statement of Mr. President and then we'll begin the analysis. It is promising to be a kind of audience participatory one. So get set with your phone as you watch us from any part of the world to participate in this topic of spectacle today. Please stay tuned. The issue here we have to begin to look at um, is that at the time of independence, I don't know if there was a trajectory to where we are going to. How, how could it be that credible, free and fair under manual conduct of election? That is where our problem lies and that is why people are now seeing that advising that we should move that the world has gone into digital we should move from the manual to the digital we cannot keep doing the same thing i expecting a different result the only way you create jobs from your ministry is that you have to you have to encourage local content. if you look at uh, the profile of sali mama mm -hmm. There is a caveat in this uh, leave given to him. He should seek medical help if he is fine. Welcome to Spectacle on Television Nigeria. This is not the first time our land has been plagued with a pandemic or an epidemic. One thing history has taught us is that a time like this would come, but we would definitely overcome and survive the situation. The 1918 influenza pandemic was one of the most deadly in world history. It was caused by an H1N1 virus with a gene of avian origin. It spread worldwide between 1918 and 1919. The total number of deaths of the pandemic was at least 50 million worldwide. The influenza hit Lagos on the 14th of September 1918. Lagos lost 1.5% of 81,941 population in the first two months of the outbreak, according to the British Public Records Service of 1919. In no time, the virus spread to Abiokuta, Ibadan. Ilori, Bida, Jeba, Zaria, Kano, and Bauchi due to the movement of people from affected areas to non-affected areas. On October 14, 1918, the flu was detected in Onitsha, where a large number of people got infected and died due to the virulent nature of the virus with insufficient health care to combat it. By December 1918, it spread all over the country. By mid-1919, the pandemic came to an end as those who had been infected either died or developed immunity against the virus. In 1897, the coastal town of Ekpe, near Lagos, was hit with a severe case of smallpox epidemic. Dr. Oguntola Sakpara Williams, the first native appointed assistant surgeon, rose to the occasion by curbing the epidemic through an unorthodox way. While at his posting at Ekpe, Sakpara took the unorthodox step of joining the local smallpox cult with the motive of understanding the operations and eventually terminating the activities which he then suspected was not helping the small community. The witchcraft and juju ordinance in 1917 made the worship of Shopono, the Yoruba god of smallpox, a crime punishable by fine and imprisonment. Let's not forget the widespread epidemic of leprosy in the entire stretch of Egbaland between 1857 and 1859. 
This led to the establishment of the first hospital in Nigeria by Reverend Father Cookward of the Catholic Church in Abiokuta. The hospital was the first set up as a world-class healthcare and research center then. The hospital, known as the Sacred Heart Hospital, still stands today at Itesi in Abiokuta. The current COVID-19 pandemic is just a phase. Let's maintain good hygiene system. Stay indoors, wash your hands, stay informed, don't panic, and in no time this is going to be over. Nigeria go survive. Welcome to Spectacle on Television Nigeria. I am your host, Daniel Atai. Uh, welcome back. Uh, with that little advert, I think we can look at the preamble of the uh, presidential address on COVID-19 extension for the lockdown yesterday. And I said that uh, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the extension of COVID-19 pandemic lockdown at the State House, Abuja, Monday, 13th, April, 2020. Fellow Nigerians, in my address on Sunday, 29th, March, 2020, I asked the president, uh, the, the president, the residents of Lagos and Ogun State, as well as the Federal Capital Territory to stay at home for an initial period of 14 days, starting from Monday, 30th, March, 2020. Many state governments also introduced similar restrictions. As your democratically elected leaders, we made this very difficult decision, knowing fully well it will severely disrupt your livelihoods and bring undue hardship to you, your loved ones, and your communities. However, such sacrifices are needed to limit the spread of COVID-19 in our country. They were necessary to save lives. Our objective was and still remains to contain the spread of the coronavirus and to provide space, time and resources for an aggressive and collective action. The level of compliance to the COVID-19 guidelines issued has been generally good across the country. I wish to thank you all most sincerely for the great sacrifice you are making for each other at this critical time. I will take this opportunity to recognize the massive support from our traditional rulers, the Christian Association of Nigeria Khan, and the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs during this pandemic. I also acknowledge the support and contributions received from public spirited individuals, the business community, and our international partners and friends. I must also thank the media houses, celebrities, and other public figures for the great work they are doing in sensitizing our citizens on hygienic practices, social distancing, and issues associated with social gatherings. As a result of the overwhelming support and cooperation received, we are able to achieve a lot during these 14 days of initial lockdown. We implemented comprehensive Republic health measures that, that intensified our case identification, testing, isolation, and contact tracing capabilities. To date, we have identified 92% of identified contacts while doubling the number of testing laboratories in the country and raising our testing capacity to 1,500 tests per day. We also trained over 7,000 healthcare workers on the infection prevention and control while deploying NCDC teams to 19 states of the Federation. Lagos and Abuja today have the capacity to admit some 1,000 patients each across several treatment centers. Many state governments have also made provisions for isolation wards and treatment centers. We will also build similar center near our airport and land borders. Using our resources and those provided through donations, we will adequately equip and, and man these centers in the coming weeks. Already, healthcare workers across the treatment centers have been provided with the personnel, uh, personal protective equipment that they need to safely carry out the, the care they provide. 
our hope and prayers are that we do not have to use all these centers, but we will be ready for all eventualities. At this point, I must recognize the incredible work being done by our healthcare workers and volunteers across the country, especially in frontline areas of Lagos uh, and Ogun State, as well as the Federal Capital Territory. You are our heroes, and a nation we will forever remain grateful for your sacrifice during this very difficult time. More measures to motivate our healthcare workers are being introduced, which we will announce in the coming weeks. As a nation, we are on the right track to win the fight against COVID-19. However, I remain concerned about the inc increase in number of confirmed cases and deaths being reported across the world and in Nigeria specifically. On 30th March 2020, when we started the lockdown in conforming with medical and scientific advice, the total number of confirmed cases across the world was over 780,000. Yesterday, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally was over 1,850,000. This figure is more than double in two weeks. In the last 14 days alone, over 70,000 people have died due to this disease. In the same period, we have seen the health system of even the most developed nations being overwhelmed by this virus. Here in Nigeria, we had 131 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in 12 states. On 30th March 2020, we had two fatalities then, but now the number has also increased to 300. 23. I think I would love to stop here and uh, this is an excerpt from the presidential statement and emphatically he said this is not a joke. COVID-19 is not a joke and that is where we are going to take it from and that is the essence of the lockdown, the continuity of the lockdown and uh, I have with me in the studio uh, Comrade Obina Okafor is an economist and uh, the president of the Taxpayers Association of Nigeria to begin to tell us how uh, the federal government can also cushion this effect and sources of income or money, how the government can distribute or disburse this fund or get fund to cushion the effect of the lockdown on Nigerians. And also I have uh, a researcher in the studio uh, is a traditional harbor researcher who has also written to the NCDC and the Ministry of Health about solution, preferring solution to uh, the ministry that he is capable of curing COVID-19. Uh, his name is uh, Ak Solomon uh, Solabini, uh, a renowned researcher. I will not call the harbor institution because he will have to come and register for advert. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome to the studio. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, let me begin with you, Comrade Okafo. Now you have seen Mr. President said we should take sacrifices and that it is not intentional for him to extend uh, the lockdown situation on Nigerians for the next two weeks again, judging from the global happening of the event of COVID-19. I wouldn't ask you that what is actually COVID-19 that is locking down the whole globe. I would rather refer that question to uh, Ogadia, the researcher there, who already have solution to what we do not know. Uh, so in this case, what do you think uh, can be done to the lockdown situation for Nigeria? And as an economist, you begin from the economic aspect of uh, how this lockdown could be cushioned on Nigerians. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think um, the truth of the matter is that um, this is a very terrible season and uh, it does not require any politics. Okay. We must say it the way it is. And let me say that the message from the Mr. President, the nation, uh, national broadcast of yesterday, I think is not a bad idea to extend the lockdown to the next two weeks yeah. in order to take proper measures. Yeah. That is commendable. But the rest of the message is very, very untidy 
for me it is untidy, it is unwell. Nigerians, each time they want to listen to their president, they're listening with a lot of anticipation that number one citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is coming with a message of hope. But at the end of the day, the president is sending a message of uh, appreciation to the citizenry. This is the time for us to get from government. Government of every nation in the world is giving back to the citizens in good measures. You know, we, we've seen a lot of uh, palliative measures that are given to citizens, especially within this critical, serious uh, period of uh, economic meltdown. But in our own case, there is no palliative. And you are thanking the citizens, you are sending appreciation to the citizens. Over 70% of the Nigerian citizens are in the informal sector. They aim as they go out. So now you've locked down everybody. You've quarantined over 200 million Nigerians. It's, it's, it's a, very, it's a very, very terrible situation. And the, the worst of it all is that we have a ministry. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and uh, Social, inv social uh, Investment. I want to bring you to this attention of mm. number uh, four of his presidential statement while you continue, sir. I'm sorry. He mm. said, as your democratically elected leaders, we made this very difficult decision, knowing fully well it will severely disrupt your livelihoods and bring undue hardship to you your loved ones and your communities and then number five he said however such sacrifices are needed to limit the spread of COVID-19 in our country they were necessary to save lives so what do you have to say about that um, I think in this present world mm -hmm. I am yet to see even the so-called called man of God that can do 28 dry 28 days dry fasting <laughs> I am yet to see any man of God anywhere in the world that can go to the mountain or that can go to his so-called church and do to observe 28 days dry fasting. You see, some people are saying their last prayers. You can't give somebody two weeks, no food, no nothing. You can see what is going on, what is flying out in places like Lagos. There is insecurity. People are taking loss into their hands. This thing has been occasioned by this lockdown which is as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, a very terrible, you know, biological weapon of mass destruction. It is not a joke. Mr. President said it. For me, I know it is not a joke. It is ravaging the whole world. But the point is, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Investment that have the mandate to see to the to, to the affairs of the poorest of the poor, as it is in this part of the country. Don't forget, mm -hmm. in Nigeria, we have the poor and the rich. There is no middle class. So it's either you're poor or you're rich. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there is no connection between the poor and the rich. And that is more reason. Let me tell you, government actually would have loved to assist the entire citizenry. But sometimes like I said something in this program. I said there is no data. And a lot of people are now beginning to align to that point. Mm -hmm. Now, the little magic government is doing is just deceiving themselves. The big woman that is taking care of that ministry, as far as I'm concerned, it is another monumental fraud. It is another monumental fraud. Mm -hmm. Government have told us that 2.5 million or 2.6 million Nigerians mm -hmm. have benefited from that program. And now Mr. President said he have given go-ahead order for additional 1 million Nigerians. Now let me tell you, if you do 20,000 per into 3.5 million Nigerians, you're getting 70 billion Naira. 70 billion. Yes, it is 70 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, let's assume government wants to disburse 70 billion. We have 36 states, including FCT, 37. If you share that money, you will get 1 billion, 890 million, 890,000, and some other fractions. And that money is supposed to be equal across, across board. board. You see, it is satanic. It is evil. People, people are just, look, let me tell you something. In honor of our, our departed ancestors, 
the forefathers who laid solid foundation of democracy in this part of the world. These people, they succeeded in instituting selfless leadership model across the board. Regrettably, I am inundated by their concern of high level of embezzlement, misappropriation of taxpayers' money, as well as secrecy that had bedeviled the growth and development of our nation. Now, where do they have to get money from now? To Ever since they left this bounteous world to the world beyond their king, may their souls rest in perfect peace. This is not the nation they fought for. And October 2020 will be 60 years. And I want to tell you, my brother, there is no structure on ground. It is a very big problem. Though. Let me tell you, our president has done five years and today. As a president of Federal Republic of Nigeria, he has less than three years. And the man will go. I don't know where we're heading to. This morning, had it been, government is saying we are releasing 70 billion. And they allow that 70 billion to go right round. Mr. President is saluting traditional rulers. He's saluting the Christian Association of Nigeria, the, the Nigerian uh, Supreme Council for, for Islamic whatever, and all that. These are very noble organizations. Let me tell you, you see those three organizations, they have access to the poorest of the poor. Politicians don't know the poorest of the poor in this country. You don't mean it. They don't know. Let me tell you, every emir, every exe, every first class traditional, even the local chiefs, they know the poorest of, because they have direct access. Okay. You don't need to fill any form to see a traditional ruler. I, are you saying? Pastors know the poorest of the poor. The imams know the poorest of the poor. These people in Abuja don't know anybody. What about people that are Some of them just live in from abroad. They are giving appointments. Come, uh, Mr. They are scammers. Comrade Okafo, let me calm you down. Uh, let me bring you to this. Uh, there are uh, persons who are among the poorest of the poor who are also not religious, neither Muslim, Christians, or uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, traditional uh, uh, practice practitioners, but they are, you know, idealistic. Some of them are even a taste. And so uh, the palliative, I think you have really mentioned that it should go across the nation. Across the nation, you you divided the 70 yes. billion by mm. the 36 states and the FCC, FCC. and you arrived at uh, 1, bill, 1 billion. billion. 891 million, 891,000 and some fractions. And some fractions. And mm. that is for people who have BVN. No, for everybody. For, for each state will get this money. Okay. Then it is not left for the state. Let me tell you. When you say everybody, the statistics. No, let, let me say what, what I mean is this. Mm. Had it been the only money that government can give out at this juncture mm. is 70 billion. Yeah. It's supposed to be shared across board. Okay. Then every state will go home with 1 billion, 890 million, 890,000 and some fractions. Mm. Now it is left for the governors to hand over this money to the traditional rulers and the and the head of religions. Okay. Faithful institutions okay. in the states. Yes. They're bringing all the youth organizations to say, please, this is the little we're getting from federal government. We want to consider the poorest of the poor in our midst. Mm. You see, when they take that, if they share that money in local governments, now, I, I, this thing is easier because no traditional ruler wants to gamble with his life. No, okay. He is there with the people. Uh, but do you know, do you believe that corruption can still prevail above them? No, no, listen. Because everything has politics. When when you say traditional you see, institution, the religious institution, what happens to the BVN at the central bank? Now let me tell you, that one that one is 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 even nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. You see, we have we have the people in the business community. Okay. And uh, this particular season, all relevant stakeholders are giving back to the society. Okay. Including the MTN, Globalcom and all whatnot. These telecommunication companies are supposed to be given back to the citizens. Okay. Now, let me tell you, we have over 40 million Nigerians that have BVN. Yes. You understand what I mean? Yes. What stops the bank MD to say, let us launch 5,000 5, Naira, 10,000 10, Naira to every banker, any, any person that has bank accounts okay. in order to cushion effect of this hardship. Okay. Instead of them giving this money to Nigerians, they decided to send the 
this money to CBN. Look, let me tell you something. Nigerians are weeping. All right. They didn't, that would have been another medium. Okay. If they had done that, it would have gone far. Do you know so many people for a very long time now? There is no one Naira in the account. You cannot even understand what I mean. I understand. I understand. There is there is frustration in the land. I understand. People no longer sleep because of poverty. All right. Anyway, thank you, Comrade Okafo. I will still come back to you. Uh, Solomon uh, Bola Sibina. Yes, I, you are a researcher into solution for your uh, COVID-19 drug. Uh, let me ask you, first of all, before I ask you again, or let me put the two straight to you what is actually happening the COVID-19 and what solution do you think you have uh, that you have written to the Ministry of uh, Health and the NCDC yes I'm happy that I'm allowed to come here my name is Solomon Balosi Bina okay proper pronunciation okay Solomon Balosi Bina okay uh, our research place has been on for the past 20 years. Okay. So we are not babies in research work, especially on ABBA. Okay. And our research place has gotten good credit for all that they have been researching upon. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we say that we have solution to this COVID-19? It's a viral uh, uh, attack. So, if it, that, that is the state, then have you ever tested your drug or used your drug on any virus or viral infection? I say positive, yes. In, uh, if I may mention here, in uh, 2001, World Health Organization, through NIPRID, collected our uh, drug this drug we are talking about which i don't have right to mention here yes you you have the full rights when you have uh, when you bring the advert and everything to okay. tv and i will begin to help you okay i called on you because i they said you have solution yes. and you've written to the ministry yes and i was looking everywhere for who has done that uh, so that you can give us the content of what you want to the ministry to do yes. and then uh, uh, not the name of the hub now. No, no. So you just get tell us uh, what is that COVID-19 and what have you prepared yes. to tackle COVID-19? Yes. Uh, just as I was saying, WHO through NIPRID had to collect our drugs to Federal Medical Center McCordy in 2001 okay. and use it on full-blown AIDS. As at then, they couldn't uh, be able to determine which one is HIV. Okay. It was full-blown before you had known as a, a, a carrier of a, the virus. Yes. They used it on 10 patients. We have records for that. Mm -hmm. And they all became well. In fact, at the end of their statement, they said they were uh, uh, to undetectable level, okay. which we can easily call negative. Yes. <laughs> and to, till today, we do not advertise. But we still use it to treat people. Despite the effort of the WHO to make a full clinical trial on this drug was frustrated by the approving authority. Hmm. It was frustrated by the approving authority. And today, we still use it for people. Not just that. You see, uh, COVID-19 is known to be a virus. Okay. So, if that is the case, we already set up for virus. Then secondly, this drug we are talking about is an immune booster, a very strong immune booster. Unlike the imported herbal drugs okay. that they will say take plenty before you start seeing the effect. We will tell you, give us an answer in the next 12 hours maximum. Our drug does we don't have to take plenty before you start seeing the effect. Okay. Because uh, then they are talking of a uh, uh, throat and so on. It is proven that this drug has ability to take care of that. 
It is, you see, one thing about herbs is this. A plus B in herbal remains A plus B until death do them part. Okay, just, just like an atom. <laughs> so you can't, it doesn't, you can't destroy it, you can't even, it won't form a, a, a C. It only changes. Like, like orthodox drug, when you add A plus B, you could get C. Okay. But herbal, A plus B remains A plus B till death do them part. And that is why when you take your soup, you are not poisoned. You are not poisoned because salt is doing its own thing, oil is doing its own thing. They don't combine. Okay. Let me put it that way. Okay. And uh, this uh, herbal we are talking about has ability to take care of this. It has. It is an international report on the herbs. Okay, we don't need to when, start from when, ABC. When you when you wrote to the, I saw the content of your letter. You wrote to the Ministry of uh, Health. Yes. Now in in that content, mm. you said you could help the, the federal government and the NCDC to tackle this COVID-19. Yes. You, in your statement, you say it is a uh, viral uh, virus situation, yes. virus pandemic. Yes. Now, what about if you discover now that it is not a virus pandemic and is a chemical pandemic, what would you, what would you do? Has the Federal Ministry of uh, Health given you go-ahead to assist them? They have not given us a go ahead to assist them. That's right. And I plead, I plead, I plead with them to bury pride. Nobody is coming to take their position from them. To bury pride and allow others. So I could remember, uh, only I can't remember the date, but in the 18 something, there was an epidemic and they couldn't get solution. It was uh, only, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they now told the people, the soldiers that were even fighting, mm. please use ordinary lemon. And the epidemic was over. Mm. Thank God for what you played in your advert. Mm. Uh, it, it, the doctor, they are a medical doctor, had to drop that medical doctor, uh, doctorship, <laughs> or, or whatever you may call it, yes. so that he can use automobile yes. <laughs> to cure that. And he got cured. Yeah. So what, am, what are we talking about? Let we allow. We are pleading with the uh, uh, federal, health workers, yeah, the doctors. I beg the federal ministry of health. Yes, to drop their pride. Let Nigeria get a name from this. Mm, that's good. Let Nigeria get a name from this. Don't look for your individual glory. Look for the glory of Nigeria, and the glory will also come to come back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will still come back to you to ask you certain things about. Uh, uh, the content of that your letter okay. and whether you've gotten reply from the Ministry of uh, Health. Okay. Uh, we are still on Spectacle on Television Nigerian and we are discussing the presidential statement and especially the emphatic statement made that COVID-19 is not a joke. And we are asking what is COVID-19? What is the solution or what could be the solutions to COVID-19? And how do we cushion the effect of lockdown, the economic lockdown? So I have also an economist in the studio who is also the president of the Taxpayers Association of Nigeria, Comrade Okafor. And I have uh, Ak Solomon Bola Sibini, who is also in the studio, a researcher of a travel medical drugs that could fight COVID-19. You can join us from wherever you are watching us from and the numbers will be displayed on your screen. If you have your opinion as to the topic uh, we on discussion you can give us a call on 081-3701-5949 or 070-5432-7616 remember if you are calling from abroad outside the shore of nigeria please do put the country code plus 234 and while uh, we wait for the audience i think uh, i will be expecting the call from professor siri uh, Sadame from uh, uh, Novena University in Delta State. He has a, also a view on COVID-19 to explain to us. But uh, comrade, uh, now COVID-19, you are particular about the cushioning the effect of the lockdown. If the lockdown is not done and it is spread like what we have, 
in Italy, in the uh, US, and in uh, China, where the thing here from on the 31st of uh, December. Do you think that that death rate will, could equate the death rate from hunger that we are crying and Nigerians are saying they are going out now, they, won't, they don't want any lockdown anymore since there is no palliative. Uh, if the death, the death that has occurred in China, Italy, U.S. comes before them, would they talk about hungry anymore? Yeah, thank you very much. The truth of the matter is that in this part of the world, Nigeria as a country have a very peculiar covenant with God Almighty. Okay. God knows that we don't have good leadership as a nation. And that is more reason why, out of his infinite mercy, he has given us spiritual immunization. And that is more reason why this thing can never have root, like what we are seeing in other nations. We are not even prepared. President told us in his speech that they have trained 7,500 uh, <laughs> you know, you know, health workers. Is it for local government or is it for one state? You understand what I mean? Mm. So the truth of the matter is that this thing is ravaging the whole world. Nations like United States, don't forget, one teaching hospital in America, the cost and the annual budget of such hospital is higher than the entire budget of Ministry of Health in Nigeria. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So even as we speak today, there is no prepared there's no preparedness. Nobody envisaged that this kind of thing will happen. And up to this way, we government is still looking for a way on how to balance equation. We need to level up. Okay. We need to level up. And this is another period for us to learn a lot of lessons. It is a season of adequate mental meditation. As a nation, we've lost it. Let me tell you, my brother, if truth must be told, our leaders successive government including this present government need to tender on reserve apology to the citizens for what they have done to us they have failed they have squandered the future of the younger generation and that is more reason why we don't have any, a country that will be 60 years this year does not have anything in the health sector i was listening to to sgf boss mustafa he's a perfect gentleman the man spoke his mind he said it the way it is he said he never knew that that nothing we don't have anything in the health system. That is a senior citizen of this country. Don't forget, we have Institute of Medical Research. Under the Ministry of Health, we have Institute of Pharmaceutical Research. All these institutes are there. If you go there, nothing is going on. Government does not invest in such kind of places. Today, let me tell you, do you know some of the uh, zonal intervention projects from National Assembly members? I have done a survey and from my research some, some months ago, I came in contact of a health care that was constructed by an honorable member. When he finished those, that project, very laudable project, he did it for his people. He took it to the local government. He said, I am handing over this thing to local government so that our people can enjoy adequate health care system. The local government chairman said, the, health, the, the, the caretaker committee, not even the local government chairman, said, Honorable, we cannot take this one. No. We don't have money. How can we, how can we, how can we employ people? It's as bad as that, though. Yeah. Now, government is talking about 150 million Naira Stabilization Fund that they will add to ensure that state governments will continue to enjoy enough economic oxygen to enable them pay their salaries and all that and blah 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 but let me tell you mr president in fairness did a very good homework by instituting national financial intelligence unit the essence of bringing that institution was to secure or to provide financial autonomy for local governments yeah. And by extension, it is another platform for governors to ensure that there is democratic elected local government chairmen mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. So that they can, 
The more reason why this thing is sinking to the rural man, to the rural woman, to the rural youth, is that there is no life in the local government. They are not part of this world. Mm. People in Abuja are crying. People in Lagos are crying. People in Kano. What about villages? When you come to state, what is so they are disconnected. Mm -hmm. And government is saying from the speech of the president that they are aware that this thing has entered into the rural community and that they need to do the but let me tell you, we have so many issues at the same time. Do you know that some of this isolation center up till now, so many people there are crying of reckless abandonment. You take people to isolation center. You claim they have COVID-19. Yes. You don't even give them any attention. Mm. You don't even provide food because, it, don't forget, at this level, the person is not allowed to have relationship with his family. Mm. There is no serious intercourse again mm. with the family. Mm. The person is in full-time confinement. It's okay. The person is supposed to be taken care of. Yeah. So that is the problem we are faced. All right, comrade, I'll come back to you. Uh, uh, Mr. Solomon, sir. Yes, sir. Now, when you discussed with the Ministry of Health, uh, what do you think you can do clinically to cure COVID-19? Yes. <clears throat> Are you using the drugs now? Yes. People that even know about the drug, yes. they now stumble on us. Okay. Rushing us. Please give us this but drug. The ministry. The ministry. That's why I pleaded that they should remove pride. But they should write history. Yes, they should remove pride and let's. We should write our own story. Yes. Now the well, the sample that uh, the sample of your drug in two thousand and one that you said about yes. HIV. Yes. That WHO collected. Yes. Uh, what did they make out of that drug? Yes, they got they got results. Mm. The HIV patients mm. were well. Okay, you have evidence. We have that. evidence. And they decided to help Nigeria, let me put it that way, okay. to do a full clinical trial okay. so that a, 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 it can come to, to limelight. Okay, and probably that was why the Trado Medical uh, Institution was uh, approved by NAVDAC. I, I, I don't know that, that it is supposed to be approved because WHO has said that yes, they, they should, because other countries are using uh, herbal. Okay. Uh -huh. Other countries are using herbal. But Nigeria is just using herbal on the surface. Okay, do you quantify, do you make quantitative analysis of your herbal uh, portions to talk about the volume uh, to be administered and then on patient and then uh, quantitative yes. or qualitative By the analysis. grace of God, mm -hmm. we have pharmacists working with us. Okay. We have uh, biochemists working with us. Mm -hmm. We are not just uh, one of them. Okay. We are not just one of them. And not just that, our drug, for example, mm. sorry to digress, mm. our sickle cell drug is the best, it's rated as the best in the world. Okay, so when are you now coming to showcase this drug on TVN? Well, you know, with full advertoria, with the capacity that we can now show yes. to the world that this is uh, made in Nigeria. And the Ministry of Health will begin to come and beg you to say, okay, please give us this drug. Yes, so we can come I... anytime as long as uh, uh, your money is not too much for yeah, us. It's not, it's not too much. We'll discuss that behind okay. the, uh, after the program. Yes. You, you, you can afford it. Mm. And we think we would love to do business with you, partner mm. with you, to let the world know because it's a pandemic. People are yes. actually sick mm. and people are perplexed. Yes. The pandemonium is much. People mm. don't know what to do. And we have solution right mm. in front of us. A professor just you know, said, he will, said he has solution for mm. COVID-19. And nobody is talking about that. All we are depending is a WHO mm. and World Health, I mean, a World Bank IMF to give us this to mm. do so that we depend on the drugs from the American FDA when we have our own here. Oh, yeah. That is why I brought you to the studio. So you are now going to assure us that you are coming and you will unveil this drug to Nigeria. Yes, we, we are coming. And then the Ministry of, uh, uh, Ministry of Health yes. will have to take it up from there. Yes, so We will come. And uh, one good thing about the uh, drug is mm. even if you don't have uh, this uh, COVID-19 COVID and your immunity is down mm. within 24 hours your immunity will start rising without, when you are need without any consequence no consequence okay. very very safe and the, also 
our drugs that we usually bring out from our institute is able to combine with orthodox drug without any side effect. You, you understand? It's well researched. Well researched upon. Mm. So it's not a matter of uh, making us. We don't advertise naturally. Okay. We've never advertised. Okay. But our drugs have been advertising us. Yeah, I believe it. But now we have to take it off from there. Okay. Because it's a matter of death and life now. Okay, yes. So you have to advertise now okay. uh, and save Nigerians. Mm. Uh, what do you think about that? No, it's good. It's good. It's okay. So I'll be waiting on you okay. on TVN. Okay. Uh, please, I would like the callers to begin to. The lines are open, but we will go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll be rounding up the program on spectacle. Again, to look at um, is that at the time of independence, I don't know if there was a trajectory to where we are going to. But Something. how could it be that credible, free, and fair? under manual conduct of election. That is where our problem lies and that is why people are now seeing that, advising that we should move, that the world has gone into digital. We should move from the manual to the digital. We cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. The only way you create jobs from your ministry is that you have to, you have to encourage local but content. They have if you look at uh, the profile of Sally Mama, mm -hmm. there is a caveat in this uh, leave given to him. He should seek medical help if he's fine. Welcome to Spectacle on Television Nigeria. Yeah, welcome back. This is the spectacle, and we are still discussing, analyzing from the statement of uh, presidential address yesterday by Mr. President Muhammad Buhari. And my guests are still in the studio, making a justice to it. I will, uh, on the last note, Mr. Comrade Okafo, I want us to uh, emphatically tell us, apart from the sources and the criti criticism around this COVID-19 lockdown, where do you think Nigerian government can get fund to, you know, cushion this effect of the lockdown? Just in one minute. You, the other time you were in the studio, you mentioned so many areas where monies are lying down fallow, and I believe that the lackadaisical attitude of the government, not dishing out disbursing fund, probably is lack of fund. So, they said in a week they will get to us. So where do you think they can get funds from easily on your last note? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing is that there is life after this coronavirus. In fact, the worst coronavirus we have in this country is economic coronavirus. Okay. Uh, that one will still ravage us the more because we are not even economically stable. As such, I am of opinion that government must go inward to recover some monies that are in the hands of multinational oil and gas com companies in Nigeria. Okay. Especially now that we have signed the deep offshore and inland res basin uh, uh, production sharing com formula. Okay. And this money is to the tune of $63 billion. As we, yes, yes, government is aware. Government is aware. Mm -hmm. This money has been accrued for a very long time. It's long overdue. And it is amount to over 20 trillion naira. It is very important that we lay out the parameters on how to recover these monies. Number two, government should consider on how to hand over, sell off so many of their liabilities. There are so many abandoned projects nationwide. Okay. Government can involve private sectors, let them come and take upon so many of these abandoned projects like. that are the lying fallows. Okay, can you mention one or two? No, we have so many of them. We have mm. we have some some hospital we have a hospital in in, 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 in okay. that is over eighty percent completed. Okay. It has been hanging there. We have even in Anambara where I come from, okay. we have a particular market in Oba mm. that was constructed 2001, 2002. Mm. It has been lying fallow. Mm. We have such things 
in quantum in this country. Mm -hmm. So government should now begin to consider on how to auction some of these things. Mm -hmm. We have so many of such properties in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we can raise a lot of money from there. Mm -hmm. And above all, what is important is not raising this money. Mm -hmm. What is important is ensuring that this money does not filter into private pocket. <laughs> that is the most important <laughs> thing. Because even <laughs> now that you're crying that government does not have money, mm -hmm. government is still generating tax and VAT. Yes, True. government. Yes, yeah, government, yes, that is yes, huge. yes. So people still pay, <laughs> uh, advertently or inadvertently. Okay. So that is more reason why. The truth of the matter, let me tell you, mm. we need industrial revolution. Mm. After now, don't forget, China mm. is shut down. Mm. Ninety-nine percent of our product come from China. Mm. We are import-driven economy. Mm. So today, it will be near impossible for any trader or any importer to think of going to China to import anything. So that is more reason why government will need to rejig the industrial policy. Okay. We have a problem there. Okay. We need to rejig the industrial policy so that government will not, You can't just say you are giving out one trillion naira to manufacturing for manufacturing intervention mm -hmm. without considering that we have a problem of power. Mm -hmm. We need to think about green energy affordable energy cheap energy okay. you understand what i mean yeah. outside what we have today with the kind of energy we have you can use it for manufacturing mm -hmm. that is more reason why over 80 percent of manufacturing industries have collapsed in nigeria because they cannot afford it we need affordable energy and it is very very friendly and workable so what i'm saying is that this is the right time for the president of federal republic of nigeria to constitute a very solid think tank economic team that can look into doing a lot, giving an emergency to manufacturing sector in Nigeria. We need jobs, so, mm -hmm. so many people will lose jobs after this time. Yes, so many Nigerians will lose jobs. Yes, some are even getting the signal. Mm -hmm. Because some organizations cannot afford to pay more. Mm -hmm. yes, they will want to scale down their workers. So there is a problem, there is a danger. <laughs> you see what is going on in Lagos? People no longer sleep in Lagos. And don't forget, this is one state that people pay the highest tax yes. in Nigeria. Yes. They are tax compliance, mm. but unfortunately, Lagos State government was sharing one one cup of rice mm. and bread to the citizens in Lagos. <laughs> they have not done anything. So, but the kind of money they are making. Yes, uh, we, oh, we, my brother. We'll stop there. God Almighty will help yeah, us. I, I, thank you, Mr. Mm. Comrade Okafor. Uh, on your last note, uh, sir, yes, sir. Uh, in one or two, uh, or, uh, let me say 10 to 15 seconds, the, your, your draw, the, the solution you prefer to Nigerian Ministry of Health. Have you, you know, tested it on anybody with COVID-19 that has been cured? No, we have not. Okay. But since COVID-19 is not as strong as HIV, yes. then we are confident. All right, thank you very much. And apart from that, the properties which scientists have discovered on the drug, on the herbs we use, mm. then there's no more, there's no checking. So you are still expecting the Ministry of Health to get back to you? To get back. All right. Thank you. Uh, that is where Spectacle will stop today on Television Nigeria. You can follow us on our social media platforms. On the Twitter, we are at TV Nigerian. Uh, the Instagram, Television Nigerian. Uh, the Facebook, Television Nigerian. The YouTube link are there. You search Television Nigerian on all these social media platforms. Like our page, subscribe and ensure you drop your comment as regard the topic we discussed just now. Uh, with me in the studio has been uh, Comrade Okafo Obina, uh, the president of Taxpayers Association of Nigeria, is an economist too, and a business mogul, and uh, Ak Solomon Bolas Sidi Balusibina. Balusibina, who is a researcher into uh, travel harbor drugs for all infectious and viral disease, especially with effect to COVID-19. Thank you for watching and I have been your host, Daniel Atai.